Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Lou Collins. I am so excited today because I have got a fun collaboration where I am actually stealing craft hacks to show you. So this is all being done with permission from the lovely Mary Planko. We have collaborated today. You'll find a video on her channel as well of some of my craft hacks that she loves. And these are five of her craft hacks that I've not seen before that I'm going to share with you and maybe even show my twist on them as well. Make sure you are popping over to Mary's channel afterwards. I'll make sure that is linked down below. And every hack that I show you, I mean, first of all, it's amazing, but also, if you want to see it more in depth, I'm going to link the video up in the top corner for you as well on each tip. So you're going to be able to go and check that out on Mary's channel too. If you are new here today and you've come over from Mary, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Please hit that thumbs up and that subscribe. Let's get straight into these craft hacks. So for the first hack, we're going to be foiling without a laminator, without a foiling machine of any sort. So really just using supplies that you're most likely going to have in your craft room. So Mary has actually done quite a few foiling hacks and I'm so desperate for this one to work with this stamp that I'm actually even uh, re-inking my Versamark ink pad before I get stamping to give it the best possible chance of working. So the two hacks that I'm sharing in this one kind of technique are both, like I say, from Mary, um, from different videos. I'll make sure they are linked up here. The first one is what I'm going to do first. Um, and I thought I'd use this swirl because it's absolutely stunning, just stamped. So I thought, wow, if this was foiled onto black cardstock, imagine how amazing it's going to look. This is from my brand new uh, textures collection. This is called Opulence, the collection, the range. You can find that linked below. And I'm actually, because it's a really, really large stamp, and here's another tip for you. Large stamps, uh, sometimes in stamping platforms, you can get little air bubbles underneath them. That's just part of the course because it's a large stamp. It happens. Um, but if you stamp this way, you're not going to get that. Although there's always the risk that you may just smudge your image ever so slightly, but you shouldn't, hopefully, um, miss any areas. So I'm going to take a little bit of low-tack tape. There we go. So fold that over. That's just going to roughly give me an idea of where my cardstock's going to go. And I'm going to ink up this stamp. Now I am going to really ink this up. To be honest, if the foiling doesn't work as well as I hope it does and as well as Mary made it work, then uh, I may be going for a bit of a distressed look anyway. But let's see. So we are going to add clear embossing ink to our stamp and then to our cardstock. I'm going with black because if this foiling hack works, it's going to look so so good on the black cardstock. So I'm just pressing this down, making sure at all times I'm keeping a second hand on the cardstock to ensure that that doesn't budge anywhere. And then lifting that up. Let's take a look. Yes, yes, it's worked so well. Okay, so I'm carefully going to remove my tape and get my stamp out of the way. I'm going to cover my entire image with clear embossing powder. This is where I'll see if I have missed any spots. Hopefully I haven't. There we go. I didn't actually do my uh, anti-static anti pad first. So I was so excited to try this out. So I'm probably going to have, yeah, look, I've got tape marks, finger marks. But I'll brush those away with a little, little paintbrush in a moment. Okay, look at that swirl. That's just with the clear powder on. Let's get this mounted. Okay, embossing powder melted. Isn't that just stunning? You can still see that just glossy. Uh, that makes actually a really nice background effect. But now we're going to do this foiling. Hopefully, I hope this works. Now, I have to say, excuse my nails. As most of you know, I'm renovating a house. DIY and manicured nails do not go. So let's just oversee that. So I'm going to take, I think, silver. I think silver would look amazing. Um, I think I'll take a whole sheet. Now, actually, Mary cut hers in the trimmer, which is, uh, you know, a really good tip if you're worried about keeping straight edges on your foils. So um, you can definitely do that. Um, I'm not too precious about it. I'd, I'd chew that off if I had to. <laughs> it's fine. Now, with the foil, you want to make sure you're putting the matte side down and just check it because it may be that your technique's not working. You think, why have I got missed spots? Just check your foil because sometimes you could actually 
see that there's little missing parts on here so I've got a little bit at the bottom there and it's not actually the technique the your foil is a little bit damaged um, so just take a look at that before you get started saves you a bit of the heartache later um, so the first technique is to reheat this now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half and half covering two techniques that Mary shared uh, so the first one's going to be the first hack we're going to reheat this and we're going to smash it down as such or sort of press it down we're going to be more gentle than that we're going to press it down with a bone folder uh now um i watched mary's video and she said actually um i think it was tim holt suggested probably don't do this because it can kind of spread out the detail in the design a little bit um but she's had no problems with it so i thought okay let's see let's see how this works so i'm going to just remelt the top maybe quarter at the moment first of all with this shouldn't take long the trouble is I can't see when it's melted very easily so I'm gonna have to just hope that it's melted okay press my foil over the top and use my bone folder quickly to press in now I might need to repeat this a few times I can see it's starting to work I can see it's starting to work it actually looks though as if my uh, heat embossing on this cardstock is kind of soaking into my paper so let's try again oh that's better I think maybe I overheated the first bit I love this trying out these ticks and tips and techniques with you So this flower, I think I've overheated that. I think literally the uh, melted embossing powder has kind of soaked into the paper. <laughs> Do you know what? That's actually starting to work really well. Now you can see where I got stray bits because I didn't use my anti-static bag. And here I think what I actually did is I was getting a bit overzealous with heating, wanting it to work. So I overheated this and as it turned into a liquid this cardstock just soaked it right up so uh, there wasn't really anything to stick the foil to I was a little bit more gentle with the heating down here that's actually working really well but what I'm going to do is switch to gold and in the bottom half you can see that is a distressed image but I quite like that I do so I'm going to uh, come to the next one now again I haven't got I've got a patch here that's actually not embossed very well uh, I don't know why I'm not sure I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this technique out on these edge bits where I can see there's loads of glossy there and then I'm going to redo the best of these two techniques on a new piece of cardstock and show you um, very quickly just to see if that's the issue I think probably the cardstock's my issue here today so for this one what I'm going to do is lay my foil over the top I'm going to heat through the foil okay so I'm not heating it first I'm actually heating over the top and hopefully that embossing powder is going to heat through so let's just do a gentle press down I'm going to work round I know the middle bit it looked like the embossing powder just was not sticking okay so i've gone round i've heated that foil and you can see where it's kind of stuck give that a second to cool down and let's peel off and see what's happened if anything <gasps> yes that has worked much much better much better i love that okay so i'm going to take a fresh piece of black cardstock a better uh, less absorbent one than this and I'm going to uh, do this technique. I think I love this one. So I'm going to do this across the whole image in one foil and then show you. Okay, you ready for this? Now the foils that I'm using today are, we are memory keepers ones. They come with the uh, foil quill. So these are heat reactive foils. Um, definitely experiment with any foils you've got in your stash for this. So remember to use my anti-static bag this time and it's a much clearer image. I can see as well that uh, on that black cardstock I've switched it up for a stamping cardstock. It's a smoother cardstock and it's got finer grain to it so it's not absorbing the kind of liquid embossing as I heat it up which is great. It's staying raised. So fingers crossed this is going to look so much better. And I'm going with the second technique of heating through the foil because I definitely felt that one worked a lot better.
I think this is definitely going to be easier as I'm doing the whole image rather than uh, heating little bits at a time and pressing them into it. Uh, this is going to be a lot quicker and hopefully a lot smoother. So I'm just very, very gently uh, just kind of, I wouldn't even say rubbing, I'm barely pressing down my bone folder onto the foil as I heat it up because you can see the foil kind of flattens out anyway. I'm just giving it a brush over, like I say, hardly any pressure just to make sure that any uh, foil is sticking to the melted embossing powder through there. It's really hard because you can't actually see if the embossing powder's melted. You just have to assume <laughs> that it's had enough heat and it's doing its thing. But I love this, my uh, heat, um, heat tool, my embossing powders, my ink. These are all things that I've got to hand all the time. Uh, not having to get my laminator out, not having to get uh, a foiling machine out. This is just going to be such a time saver if I can get this working as well as I hope I can. Now I can already start to see my image coming through the foil so that's a really good sign. Ah, I'm so excited to see how this works but it does show that practice makes perfect even if you've been given uh, the tutorial for a hack. Definitely try it out a couple of times. As you can see, my cardstock wasn't right the first time. There's probably little other things that I did, like my anti -static, not using my anti-static bag made, made a huge difference as well. Uh, so yeah, test it out a couple of times. Everything uh, takes a little bit of time to perfect. With all of these hacks that I'm showing you today, this is the first time I'm trying them. So uh, yeah, I'm going to show you the good, the bad and the ugly with them as well. Hopefully so you don't mistake, make the same mistakes as I do. I can see my swirl design through the foil. So uh, I can see exactly where I need to press down a little bit more. Um, I'm hoping this means that it's all sticking really well. I know there's a little bit of design down the bottom here. It's quite hard though, I can't, I should have taped my cardstock down because it is moving a little bit as I kind of burnish it slightly with the bone folder. But I think I'm there. I've got a little bit in the middle that's not really, it's got a bit of an air bubble stuck in the middle there. So we may have a missed spot there, but I think we could probably go back over anyway, quite easily. Okay, I think that's enough. I'm going to let that fully cool down. I don't want to peel off the foil again. So uh, give that two seconds to just cool itself down. Okay, let's see what's happened. Oh, oh yes, now that's that sprayering down that I did has definitely, uh, it's kind of lost a little bit of the detail in the stamp, but look at that, if that was a background, how stunning. And I've got, let's just turn this over. I've got this that I could potentially use. I could probably cover a whole sheet in uh, clear embossing and then heat that, stick that to it as well. That would be so cool. Isn't that just beautiful? Love these hacks, love these tips. Thank you, Mary. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next hack is how to make DIY stamps. This is going to stretch your stash an unbelievable amount. So every die you've got potentially could be a stamp as well. Um, obviously there's some that may look a little bit odd as stamps, that's entirely up to you to decide. But I'd always thought this wreath from the Texture Spring Awakening collection, the leafy borders, would be great as a stamp. You could do a drop shadow behind your actual die cut if you want to, um, or you could just lay this up as a background. Uh, I'm going to cut this with foam as Mary did, and I'm also going to use these sheets. These are adhesive, double-sided adhesive sheets from Sizzix, and they're the perfect um, size for the wreath that I'm doing. And I just thought this is going to be really cool. Now you could use double-sided tape all over your foam if you've got a wide one, I suppose. Um, or you could just glue it onto something. Uh, as an acrylic block, rather than acrylic block, I've actually got a piece of acetate. Now I've done this in the past many, many moons ago uh, where I did cut foam and I used it as a stamp. But I actually glued it um, with just a wet glue, I think it was to an actual acrylic block but once I'd finished with that once the foam had kind of squashed I'd used it quite a few times I wanted to get it off it was a nightmare to get off my acrylic block and my block was ruined so I'm going to use quite a sturdy acetate as my backing card for this uh, the foam is just a children's play fun foam I love that it's got all the bright colors um, but that doesn't really make any difference when you're doing this what color it is so the first thing I'm going to do is peel off some double-sided backing here and put it 
oops, wrong side, there we go, put it onto my foam just like so and I am going to die cut through both the backing, the sticky backing and the um, foam at the same time. Now just be aware which way you are um, sticking this because of course you want to make sure that it ends up the right way around but on both sheets. Now I'm doing two sheets, um, I think Mary did a couple more in her video um, you could probably get away with one, but I worry with one if you're not using a really um, sturdy backing, like I've not, I've got a bit of a flexible one, you can accidentally push the actual backing into your paper, and if you've got any ink on there, that's going to transfer. So I'm using two layers of foam just to give me that little bit of extra depth. Um, so for this, I'm going to have, this is going to go onto my, um, let's call it the acrylic block, even though it's acetate, just so I know, <laughs> I know what I mean. So I think I'm going to have this, if my if I cut my die cut, it's going to be that way round, so I want my stamp to be this way round, so I want to cut it. I'm just thinking if I want to stamp under my die cut and do a drop, like a grey drop shadow, I want to make sure the stamp's the same way round. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to die cut this way on my sheet, and then I'm going to repeat that with the white one as well, and that can go underneath. So die cutting through foam is so easy. Um, it, I've only ever had to run it through once. I've tried in the past to run foam through forwards and backwards because that's naturally a habit that I do with any cut, cardstock when I'm die cutting. But I find that foam doesn't stick into the die with the pressure. It always pops out as it comes out the other side. So when you try to run that back through, it's always going to move ever so slightly. It's not going to stay in there the way cardstock does. So only ever run it through once and then take it out and I guarantee you, you will have cut through your foam absolutely perfectly the first time. So I'm going to just try and leave that in there if I can, because like I say, foam sticks to itself. It doesn't tend to stay in the dye pretty much ever. So I'm going to leave that and I'm going to do the same with the white version. Okay, to ensure that my die cut keeps its shape as I stick it to the um, acetate, keep one to say acrylic block um, I'm going to leave it all within the backing so I know it's holding its shape I'm going to peel off the backing paper try my best to leave the backing on the rest of the design where it is because uh, I don't want this sticking to my acetate really don't want to be trying to get that off look that's just come off beautifully I've even left the backing on all the little bits in the middle as much as possible so I'm going to press my acetate square over the top there, press that right down, making sure I've caught everything, and then remove the outer and I'm just using my tweezers to get those little bits out, um, but essentially this is now in the perfect shape because it didn't move. Um, if I'd have pulled the wreath out on, of the foam before sticking it to the acetate, it would have kind of flopped everywhere it would have just moved um, been a distorted circle even ever so slightly if you ever want to overlay this or underlay it with your die cut it just wouldn't quite be the same shape now I'm just going to hold my die over the top in a second and make sure that this is the perfect shape still so if I'm stamping down like that let's just see is it that way I know there's a certain way for this so it might be worth just marking that as well there we go look at that okay so as I just said I'm going to take a permanent marker so this is an alcohol pen uh, I'm just going to do a little red mark here and a little red mark here that way I know when I'm stamping and die cutting that that's the top. So you can see that lines up perfectly. Uh, now for the white one, I'm going to do the same. I'm actually going to peel off the backing for the white one. In fact, I'm wondering if it's going to be easier to pop out these middle pieces, these little ones first. I think it actually will be. Let me know in the comments, everyone, as well, if you like that I'm working through some of these issues with you. Do you prefer a clean and polished uh, tutorial where I've got all the answers for you and tell you exactly how to do something? Or do you like seeing uh, how we work things out? You know, what mistakes are made, how we fix them, things like that. Uh, yeah, let me know and that'll help me with for future videos. This is much quicker, popping these out with the backing on both sides already. I'm just pushing them through my tweezers and pinching them from the underneath, pulling them away. 
Okay, again, just making sure that that is lined up. Yep, and I'm going to peel off the backing again, just of the wreath, keep this in the right place. The beauty of this is you only need to do it once for any of your dies because once you've got it, um, you can reuse it time and time again. I wouldn't suggest necessarily washing this, so you wash the foam, the sticky, it could all kind of disintegrate, fall apart, but I'd definitely say you could wipe it with a wet wipe once you've inked it, um, or just let it dry, I suppose, depending on the ink you've used, and then you're going to be able to use it time and time again. It's great, it's just like such an eco-friendly way of creating new craft products. So just lining this up, just being really sure again that I'm getting this in the perfect place, the same place as the others. And I'm going to just focus on the top, pressing that down. And this should all fall into place from there. Lining that up, absolutely perfect. Peel off the outer. There we go. Okay, so I've now got myself a stamp. Let's see how this works. So I'm just going to use my Distress Oxides on this. Um, if I remember from doing this many years ago, um, the, it's, the foam initially absorbs quite a bit of ink, so you just want to make sure you're pressing quite a bit into the stamp there um, on the first use, but I think after that it is pretty good. It's not too bad. Let's go with a darker green as well. I'm going to go two-tone with this. So I've got peeled paint in the Distress Oxide and I've also got Forest Moss here. I think uh, this is quite a dry way of stamping as well. So you might want to add a slight mist of um, water, but we'll see. We'll see how we go without it. Yes, I've got a stamp. I love that. And actually, I didn't need to ink it. I didn't need to um, go in with anything else, like some water or anything. That's worked really well. And if I was to die cut this, I could die cut it and I could offset the wreath, or I could place it back in exactly the same place with the slightest drop shadow. So just sort of move it slightly, I don't know, up and to the left. And I'd have this gorgeous drop shadow as well. I love that tip and technique. I'm going to use that lots. Uh, I'm even going to try it out with word dies as well because of course you just flip it over, flip the stamp over, make sure you're putting the sticky on the other side though. Okay, uh, let's move on to the fourth hack. So the next hack that I saw on Mary's channel and loved is creating your own sticky mat, particularly for holding things still, whether you're ink blending, whether you're colouring in small elements, you don't want your fingers in the way, that sort of thing. So. I have got a scrap piece of cardstock in one of my favourite colours and I've actually got some of the uh, electronic di uh, cutting machine uh, transfer papers, so this is for your vinyl, uh, just because I had this laying around and I know it's got a very light tack to it, light stick to it, um, but you could use, um, I think it's contact paper uh, Mary used, um, that's not something we usually, we as much have in the UK, um, I don't know if it's the same thing, but I've got call this transfer paper. So I am going to cover this piece of cardstock and there's no rhyme or reason for this being this size. It's just a scrap of cardstock that I wanted to um, use to try out this technique. Uh, I'm going to cut this down. Let's do it this way. So I'm going to make sure it can fold over the back a little bit, not too much. I, I only want to use one side. I suppose you could make this double sided actually if you wanted to, um, but I'm going to this way so I'm going to peel off the backing there it's great it's got a grid on it as well and place that down onto my desk very lightly and fold this over on itself like so, so give that a fold there I don't suppose it really matters but this is going to be the back so I'm going to use some tape here it could be parcel tape this is single-sided tape yes I'm cutting my my teeth apologies it's just what I do I do it at Christmas as well when I'm wrapping <laughs> I suppose once you've done this you could actually back this with some cardstock as well so that it's not sticky on the reverse there we go I've got my own sticky mat now uh, like I say, you could put another piece of cardstock over the top and that will just prevent that from being sticky 
on your surface but actually the fact that it's not going to move about is just a bonus so let's see how I can use this now so I'm going to ink this die cut happy birthday it's fiddly um, I don't want my fingers in the way so I'm going to try it out on this mat but when I was popping the dies out, I thought, oh, I mustn't forget the dot above the eye. And I thought, do you know what? Actually, when you're die cutting, if you had something like this, even a small one just stuck to the corner of your craft mat, you could just pop any little die cuts like this on there that you don't want to lose. Um, just pop them on and, and they're not going to go anywhere because, I mean, how many times have you lost that little dot? from above the eye or J or whatever it may be. Um, that's gonna be really cool actually, just to keep, well, I might just pop it. I could even like stick it to the wall above my desk or something and just stick anything up there that I don't want to lose. Anyway, I digress. So that's another use for this. So I'm just going to pop the uh, happy birthday. Do you know what actually I'm going to cheat because I want to do ombre at the bottom of each of these letters. I'm going to just put them that way. Hopefully you can see that I've actually got um, a, a bright light shining just in that area. So I'm holding this up at an angle now so the light's not shining on it, but actually these are holding perfectly on this mat. My fingers are not in the way, getting mucky, because I am always getting messy, inky fingers, and it's not always ideal. This is perfect. This is just holding really, really well. I suppose the, the trick with this is going to be, am I going to have any residue on the back of my die cut. So let's see, I've inked those as much as I want. No, no sticky at all. No, perfect. Okay, so I've got those inked up. I've still got my little bit for above my eye. Now, lastly, I want to see whether or not if I spray this, clean it, whether that's going to reduce the tackiness once it dries. I imagine it probably will, so it's probably something you don't want to be doing at all until you're ready to replace the transfer paper, but it's worth knowing. Okay, so I've just spritzed that with water, given it a quick wipe with some kitchen towel. Let's just see if these are still going to stick in that area or not. They are still holding, they're holding again. So I suppose you could probably clean it a couple of times. I wouldn't want to do it too much. I don't want to reduce the tackiness too much, but if you have to, it's there, as is my little eye. <laughs> Great tip, Mary, love that. I'm definitely going to be keeping this at the side of my craft desk all the time. So another tip from Mary, which is something I forget about all the time. And if you've not tried it, definitely have a look at your stencils because these have so many other designs within them. So talk about flipping your stencils, reversing them, turning them, using them in different ways. I mean, you see the design on the packet as it is in the packaging. You think, OK, that's a really pretty design. But what about layering them up? But flipping it in between. So I'm going to start with stenciling this one. This is a Creative Craft product stencil, so it's from Craft Stash and it's exclusive to Craft Stash. I'm going to uh, ink it in a dark green first of all. So this is kind of going to be my background. I'm creating depth here, um, shadows and such here. So I'm going to do the two different colours just to show the two different layers. I'm definitely cleaning my stencil between each layer as well but then I'm going to flip over my stencil so make sure your stencil is really dry before you reuse it the second time I mean that design is beautiful but by flipping it over I can place it back down and I can get a really dimensional and layered image now I could bring this lower down higher up as well if I was putting something down here I'm going to put it at the same level so you can really see the variation in the design and this time I'm going in with a slightly lighter colour just to kind of give the effect that something's in the foreground and not as in the shadows in the background. And there we go. We've got such a full design now. We've got like a full wildflower, uh, a field of wheat, whatever you want to make it. And you can do this with geometric design, pattern designs as well. It doesn't have to be an image like this getting so much more from your stencils. Now with this one, I would definitely be inking down the bottom here. So I would just take one of the greens and give a little bit of a shadow to kind of just show that this is the base of the image. And bring that up a bit to make that a bit more full. 
like so perfect that is just beautiful if you were doing this on a, a nice ink blended ombre kind of sunset and this was all both greys and blacks that would look stunning as silhouettes as well but definitely try with your stencils flipping the designs uh turning the designs as well so you don't just have to flip them over you can actually turn them upside down too some of them will even work diagonally you know just have a play with them you don't have to use them in the one way so I hope you've enjoyed some of these techniques and hacks from Mary. Please do pop over to her channel because she is running through techniques and hacks from my channel that she loves using as well. She may also show you some improvements on those too, so check that out. I'll make sure Mary's channel is linked down below for you with the video. Thank you for joining me, everybody. Take care. I'll see you again soon.